You're listening to the Hustle Inspires Hustle podcast. Here, we'll help you unlock the secrets of entrepreneurship and self-development. This is your host, Alex Quinn. I'm a full-stack marketing executive and global keynote speaker. Get ready to get real-world knowledge from top-level entrepreneurs and world-class business leaders. Hey guys, Randy Zuckerberg here. Hi everyone, it's Neil Patel and you're listening to Hustle Inspires Hustle. This is the motherfucking CEO, Andy Frisella. You're listening to Hustle Inspires Hustle with Alex Quinn. Become an authority and thought leader in your niche. Join a free private community of entrepreneurs and professionals looking to grow their business and optimize their performance. Get easy to learn resources and materials that empower your personal and financial success. Easily accessible for free on desktop and mobile app. Go to hustleinspireshustle.com forward slash app to access now. That's hustleinspireshustle.com forward slash app. Enjoy the rest of the episode. What's going on, everyone? This is Alex Quinn, and you're listening to the Hustle Inspires Hustle podcast. On today's episode, we have Nick Santanastasso. What's up, Nick? Hey, brother. How you doing? Thanks for having me. Hey. Yeah, man. Happy to have you on here, man. I've been wanting to have you on here for a minute. Your speech at Social X impacted the shit out of me like a year and a half ago. And I've been following your journey for a bit now. And I figured it would be really, really good for us to jump on here and chat a little bit and give people some golden nuggets. Sounds good. Yeah, a lot has happened since that event. So let's let's jump in. Cool. So let me let me give everybody some context. Uh, Social X was an event that I was hosting a year and a half ago. And Nick was one of the speakers and his his speech blew me away um just the way that nick thinks and you know nick's outlook on life you guys will be able to to understand a lot more once he gets to speaking but it was really impactful for my team and i we were all there and we honor a lot of the stuff that he does and we value his mindset we value the message that he puts out it aligns with a lot of our values as a team and we wanted to bring it to you guys so nick why don't you give us a little bit of a breakdown yeah um we could. St- I give them some context of why I look like a, why I look like how I look. Um, <laughs> they don't. They don't even know yet. <laughs> yeah, and so no one even knows. So in um, in 1996, my mom went in for a late ultrasound, um, and they brought the baby up on the screen, and suddenly the doctors started looking at each other with puzzled faces, and what they saw in the ultrasound was that the baby or me, um, the limbs weren't being developed, and so what the doctors did was they classified me with what they call Hanhart syndrome. And Hanhart syndrome is a super rare genetic disorder that either leaves the babies with undeveloped limbs or undeveloped organs. And actually, at the time of my birth, I'm 24, so the time of my birth in 1996, I was the 12th baby in medical history that they've ever seen this happen to. And out of the 12, eight of those babies have passed away due to undeveloped organs. And so, you know, they told my parents I had about a 30% chance to live, and my parents made a massive promise or a massive decision, and that decision was to focus on the 30% chance of me living rather than the 70% chance of me passing away. The reason being is not only does focusing on the negative never serve you, but what you focus on, you'll get more of. And for those that are tuning in right now, I think we can all agree that what's wrong in your life is always there to focus on. It's always available. And what's right in your life is always available for you to focus on, but it really depends on you choosing what to focus on. And to give a little quick equation or a little um, you know, breakdown about focus, focus equals an emotion. Your emotion then leads to an action. And so what you focus on, you will get more of, but also you will take an action. And so that's exactly why if we wake up on the wrong side of the bed and we don't catch our focus and our patterns, our whole day tends to be negative. Because what humans do is we stack thoughts. And we can stack thoughts in a negative way or we can stack thoughts in a positive way. And so if you ever find yourself waking up on the wrong side of the bed, make sure you're able to snap out of it and switch your focus to something that's more empowering and positive or else your whole day is going to be shot. Absolutely, man. And this is something you had to learn firsthand throughout your childhood, throughout middle school, throughout high school. I remember you talking about that. Why don't you give us a little bit of insight on that? Yeah, so... You know, I, I, by the time that I got into middle school and high school, you know, I was a chubby kid. I love food. I'm an Italian kid, so I love food. And I had a lack of confidence. I had no self-worth. And I think one of my biggest challenges were females. Um, because when you get into middle school and high school, boyfriends and girlfriends are a big deal. 
And for example, I had, you know, a situation where I was on the bus and this girl to the left of me was making fun of everyone on the bus. And when she got up to me, she said, Nick, I don't even have to start with you. You're already too messed up anyway. Um, and, and from that moment, I started to stack thoughts. My thoughts were, well, Nick, you're right. Girls don't like you because you have no legs and one arm and you'll never have a girlfriend and yet you'll never go to a school dance and blah, blah, blah. I started stacking, right? And what you'll notice is if we have, you know, impactful moments or negative moments like this, these are where our limiting beliefs stem from. And so, you know, I had beliefs that I wasn't good enough, that girls don't like me and I'll never have a girlfriend. I'll never have a happy life, right? All from one little moment on the bus. And so by the time that I got into high school, I was looking for the secret sauce. And the secret sauce that I was looking for was confidence. Everyone tuning in right now, I think you can all agree that every single human being wants to be more happy, more fulfilled, and more confident in some area of your life. And if you think you're confident in all areas of your life, you probably lie about other things as well. And so mm -hmm. confidence, what I realized um, later on in my life, I didn't realize this as a 16-year-old kid, but confidence is something that you acquire. Confidence is a skill. It's a muscle that you exercise. And how you build confidence is you follow through on the very things that you say you're going to do. And so what I mean by that is, you know, say I told Alex, I said, meet me at 6 p.m. at Chipotle. We're going to have a burrito, burrito date. And he said, awesome. And Alex shows up. And at 6 p.m., I don't show up. How many times does it take for, Alec, for me to not show up to, to the date with Alex to realize that I'm unreliable? Yeah. Well, that, that example goes within yourself. How many times do you have to not show up for yourself to realize you're unreliable? And so as humans, every time that we commit to something and we don't follow through in it, whether it's big or small, we actually subconsciously diminish the relationship we have within ourselves. We diminish our self-integrity. We diminish our worth. And most importantly, we diminish our word. As human beings, one of our po most powerful things is our word. And so how we build confidence is we set little micro goals or we set something that I call non-negotiables. You may have heard it. And non-negotiables are exactly what they say they are. Things that you do despite whether business was good, whether the wife was good, the relationship, whatever it may be. These things get done. And they don't have to be five or ten things. Let's keep it simple. One to two to three things a day that you do each and every day that give you the feeling of progression. Giving you the feeling that you move forward despite whatever happened in your life. And so, for example, for me, I have my gallon of water a day. I drink four of these, which equals a gallon. I know that I get my gallon of water a day in and I have a 45 minute workout. I move my body. Um, and the reason why this is so important is because like I said, despite whether business goes great or business doesn't go great or the day is terrible, at least you can fall back on your non-negotiables, your foundation that make yeah. you feel like you progressed. And Absolutely. so- yeah, so you know, from there, I wanted to become a wrestler. My older brother was a wrestler. All my best friends were wrestlers, and um, I thought the girls would like me if I could become a wrestler. This was my thought process as a 16, 17-year-old <laughs> kid. And so I had a little bit of a challenge, and my challenge was that this limb, uh, my, my right limb, was five inches longer than it is now, and my bone was going faster than my skin. So yeah. it was super sensitive, and the bottom line is if I would have hit my arm hard enough, my bone would have came through my skin. And so one of the things that my parents taught me at an early age, which um, this will give the, the viewers massive value is, and I'll, I'll bring it back to the childhood. My, my parents basically sat me down, let me know that I was born with no legs, one arm, and said that I have to adapt to the world and the world's not going to adapt to me. And so in the most polite way, they would put my clothes in front of me and they say, Nick, figure it out. And they never do the work for me. They'd only give me verbal suggestions, but they never physically put my clothes on. And I finally realized how to put my clothes on. And then they did the same thing with my food. Here's a spoon. Here's some Cheerios. Figure it out. But what were they doing? What they were doing was, first, they, at an early age, they got me comfortable in uncomfortable situations. But at an early age, I also developed an empowering relationship with failure and rejection. The reason why that's so important is because if you run away from failure, if you view failure as a foe or an enemy, then you're never going to grow in your life. <laughs> also, if you don't have an empowering relationship with rejection, then every time that you get rejected, you're going to crumble and you're going to fall. And entrepreneurship is probably not the uh, the life for you because as entrepreneurs, we, we face rejection and failure every single day. <laughs> and so what if, if you're up for it, for adopting the mindset of every time that you were faced with a problem, every time that you were faced with a failure, every time you were faced with a challenge or rejection, that it was actually a sign that you were moving in the right direction. Yep. Because 
if you're not experiencing failures, problems, challenges, and rejection, you're probably not in the trenches working, right? Yep. And um, the second thing which I mentioned was at an early age, my parents programmed my brain to be solution-oriented because they didn't give me the solution. They just gave me the challenge or they gave me the problem and said, figure it out. And so people get paid a lot of money to solve solutions. And so those two very things, if we can adopt, right, if we can adopt having an empowering relationship with failure and rejection and and becoming solution oriented, I think that goes a long way for us. And from from the looks of it and from the looks of following following your career, you are action oriented, you are forward thinking and outside of the box. Let's talk about some of the crazy shit you've done, man, because you've done some amazing things. Um, let's give everybody a visual. Yeah. Um, let's go rapid fire through these. So the, the first one we were talking about was I, I didn't, but the doctors amputated five inches of this arm off so I could become a wrestler. Um, first crazy item on my list, I guess. Um, and that was, that was me following through on a massive promise that I made to myself. And that massive promise was that I was to become a wrestler. And so hopefully for you in your life, you don't have to, you know, cut off a limb to, follow your dreams. Um, but really the question that I'd like to ask is what are we willing to sacrifice for a taste? What are we willing to sacrifice for our dreams? And then to go a step deeper, hopefully it's not a limb like me, but what are the very beliefs in your life that you need to cut off that no longer serve you? And those beliefs uh, give you some examples that we all have. I'm not good enough. I don't have the resources. I'm too old to pivot. I'm too young to pivot. I don't have the limbs. I'm too tall. I'm too fat. All the limiting beliefs that hold you back from everything that you want on the other side. And then one more step deeper is what are the very people in your proximity or in your environment that no longer serve you that you need to cut off? And that's probably the most challenging one because I think we can all agree that sometimes it's our closest family and friends that may not align with our vision, may not, may not align with growth, or maybe they're, they have good intent, but their intent isn't the best intent for you. And so yeah. what do you do with those people? Well, you don't cut them off. Don't tell don't tell uh, your family that Nick said to cut you off. But well, you, you can do what I call love from afar. And what that means is you just don't give them all your time and energy because you're focused on bettering yourself and building your empire. And so the analogy that I like to use is who's in your front row of life? And your front row of life should be people that are hyping you up, people that are pushing you because you know that you, you they know that you have more in you. Um, and then the people that are in the, the other rows, they could be your family and friends or the people that kind of align, but you just don't have to give them all your energy. So anyway, first thing, first crazy thing, chopped off my arm to become a wrestler. Um, second crazy thing that I did was my first taste, I guess, of entrepreneurship or getting myself a following was dressing up as a legless zombie and scaring people in Walmart and going famous for it. Um, and so I wanted to create a brilliant idea where I can make people laugh and inspire them at the same time and a way to go viral, get my name out on the map or in the world. And so I put fake blood on my face and I put fake blood on my clothes and I set out to my local Walmart where I scared my first victim, we could say. <laughs> it went internationally viral and led me to my pranking career. Um, from there, Nick made the shift to, I wasn't fulfilled, I wanted more out of life. And so I made every decision that a man with no legs and one arm would make and that's becoming a bodybuilder. And so that's the, the, the second decision or the third decision that was wacky was becoming a bodybuilder and um, proving to people that it's not the physical body that holds you back, but the biggest disability you can have is a bad mindset. Um, and from there, uh, another crazy thing that we did was I, I started a speaking company at 20 years old, 20, 21 years old. I'm 24 now. And within three and a half years, we were able to scale it to close to seven figures and land a world tour partnership with Tony Robbins. This was my rapid fire craziness. Um, so let's go into whatever hole you want to go into. All right. So what? <laughs> cause that's a lot. That's a lot to take in. Um, what are your? What are your? I would say like daily non-negotiables when it comes to team building, right? Because doing everything that you're doing right now requires a big team, a lot of people to be behind everything that you're doing. What keeps your team sharp? What keeps your team on edge? What keeps your team connected? What are some things you guys like to do? Yeah, absolutely. The first thing that comes to my mind is I'm very good at casting a compelling vision. So what a great leader does is cast a compelling vision for the company, um, for the for the people, so they can see their vision in your vision as well. And so um, always just 
painting the picture of what does it look like in a year? What does it look like in six months? What does your finances look like? What does your life look like? Where do you want to visit? Where do you want to go? Because I also, me and my team look at money as simply energy or a vehicle to do more, to give more, and to serve more. And one of the things that fills me up and it probably fills you up and a lot of people is giving people experiences or spoiling those around you that you love. And so we are very connected to our ultimate driving force. My ultimate driving force is that I want to give my parents a life like they gave for me. Very simple, powerful, straight to the point. And so my team is very um, clear on why they do what they do each and every day. Also, one of our core values in our business is transparent communication. And mm -hmm. what that means is if you're pissed off, tell me. If you're angry, tell me. If you're upset, you're triggered, tell me. Because we basically built a brotherhood, uh, not only a friendship, but a brotherhood and you know a business partnership together. We all live together, and that could be extremely difficult at times if there's no communication. And yeah. so how many times have we had a, you know, a, co a, a, a co-worker or a, or a person in your group do some small thing and it pisses you off, but you never communicate it? And then it stacks. We talk about stacking, right? This can stack in business. And then it's stacking and stacking and you never communicate it. And then your business partner does one small teeny weeny thing and you blow up. And you're like, why is that? It's because you didn't resolve it by communicating up front. And so transparent communication, also authenticity and transparency. We always, always want to be transparent. I'm transparent with the team. They're transparent with me. And we're also transparent with our clients. And then also is... You need to allocate time that's not business with those people, right? And so it's very hard because we all live in the same house. We've been married with married in business for three and a half, four years. And so there needs to be time that's allocated towards business. And you talk about business. And then there needs to be time where you're just buddies and you're just friends. And you're not bringing up what you got to do because there's always something that you could talk about in business for all the achievers that are listening. Um, yeah. And so allocate time for your personal life. Allocate time for your business life. And then... Also for team building is maybe once a week, if you if you can pull it off, maybe once a week you do some sort of team building activity or bonding, whether that's a hike, whether that's going to the movies, going to the park, playing Frisbee together, doing something that's outside of business because as achievers and people that go, 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 I was just saying it to my girlfriend. I'm like, she's like, do you realize we just, uh, we just talk about business all the time? I'm like, yeah, I mean. I'm a young dude. That's all I really want to focus on is business. But <laughs> if I don't allocate time to personal life, my family and other things, it won't happen. Yeah. And that's something that a lot of us tend to overlook when we're, we're first getting started. We're around the same age. I, I'm, I'm two years ahead of you. But I recall from, from the jump, from being a teenager, wanting to do business, it's all I ever concentrated on. And I wanted to spend every waking hour being efficient. And Oh, I learned. I learned my lessons, right? I missed out on a few important things. And, and then I started really taking care of myself and understanding why I needed to do things and why I needed to be cognitively aware of the moment of the situation. Like, you know, probably a year and a half back, I would have had, you know, this interview with you right now. And I probably would have been awake still from last night, like finishing a bunch of shit. And I don't think that's the way because like you said, you could always continue you could there's there's always more and one of the things i like to do is i just like to cut myself off at a certain time i'm like no more like no more screens no more anything no more nothing like i'm either gonna read i'm gonna go for a walk i like the activities you mentioned we, we took a team kayaking session this sunday so we all went kayaking that was pretty cool and just to get the creative juices flowing just to you know talk to us people because when you're always on money making mode it, it, it's hard to it's easy to forget what's really important and the, and the values that everybody's there for, really. So speak, speaking of values, Nick, how was the, how, what were the takeaways from that experience with Tony Robbins? I know Tony instilled some really, really good values in his content, and I'm sure being around that was really life-changing for you. Why don't you share a little bit of that experience? Yeah, great. So my biggest, uh, I think one of my biggest breakthroughs, and it's been my breakthrough word this past year, is the word compassion. And I think compassion is key. I think compassion is everything. And, and the reason why I say compassion is because as achievers, as people want to go, 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 if things don't go our way or things don't go as planned or they're not perfect, we tend to get pissed off. We tend to go in some to, to the red level of consciousness, of angriness and trying to force things. And I've been using that as an anchor of every time that I feel myself getting triggered or pissed off that I have to drop down to compassion. 
because compassion always wins. Um, and, and I've also seen that in speaking abilities, you know, like I've been able to spend a lot of time with Tony. I, I learn from his teachings, but I also analyze him when he's on stage because I'm a student of the game. And so Tony <laughs> can come out on stage and he could be like, bah, bah, super aggressive. And then he can drop down and change his tonality, talk a little bit slower and hit you on that level. And that's a powerful freaking thing to do is because everybody has a different taste of communication everybody yeah. needs to be communicated a little bit differently and if i came out and i was like always aggressive there'd be people in the audience that'd be like i don't like this guy it's kind of scaring me and so i have a little bit of all of my presentations i have times where i'm going i'm going and i'm aggressive and i'm drilling and then i have times where i drop down into my compassion mm -hmm. and my lover and my and my kindness and i slow down and I let things really sit and they pause. And these are just the little things, the two millimeter shifts that, that take you to the next level. And then also, I think the 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 big breakthrough or, or the big lesson of how I got with Tony Robbins was giving without expectation and constantly planting seeds. So many people probably see like, oh, of course he's on stage with Tony Robbins. He's got no legs, one arm. He probably feels bad for him. Like, hell no. Tony's not letting anyone on stage unless they have a certain speaking caliber or a certain speaking ability. And oh. how we were able to get on the stage was just served for free. There were so many times that I speak for his youth for free. There were so many times that I, I did something within the organization for free and not expecting anything in return. And what that doing is they're probably testing me to see if I was in it for the right reasons, right? Because listen, most people are in this mindset of a quick fix. They're in it like, what can I get out of this relationship? What can I get out of this podcast? What can I get out of this partnership? But when you come and you just truly want to serve and give massive value, you're leveraging the law of reciprocity. And what that means is that if I do something for Alex, just out of my kind heartedness and my contribution, Alex is probably going to be compelled to, to provide value in some sort of way to me. Right. And so giving without expectation and planting seeds. And what I mean by planting seeds is always, always, always share your goals, your ambitions and your visions, what you want to accomplish with everyone, because you never know who that person knows or you never know who that person can open you up to. And mm -hmm. also, there's a little thing in our brain, our brain called the RAS, the reticular activating system. And what is that? Well, if you ever wanted a specific car and you were driving on the highway and that was the only car you saw on the highway, then that was your RAS. Or ladies, I don't wear dresses so I can't relate, but ladies, have you ever wanted a specific dress and then you finally got that dress or that swimsuit and you saw a bunch of other women with the same thing? Why <laughs> is that? Because you get more of what you focus on. Mm -hmm. And so what that means is if you have your goals, your ambitions, and your vision in mind, now you're more likely to see the networks, the resource, resources, and the opportunities to help you get there quicker. But if you're focused yeah. on the wrong thing, there's going to be opportunities that slip by you because you're focused on the wrong thing. Yeah, I hear you. Hey, I just wanted to jump in real quick to tell you about how to train yourself in organization, balancing your priorities, developing successful habits, and most importantly, having a better mindset. I'm giving free access to resources and materials on business management and self-development. Go to hustleinspireshustle.com forward slash app to get access. That's hustleinspireshustle.com forward slash app. Make sure to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter at Hustle Inspires Hustle. Okay, let's get back into the episode. What are you focusing on right now that's important to you in business growth and personal growth? What are your goals right now? Yeah, so I went through a massive identity shift um, because of COVID, and it was a great identity shift. And it was basically like my whole company was based off of live events, and I had no products or services or avenues to offer people um, for them to go deeper into my world. So I'm not only doing myself a disservice, but I'm doing my raving fans a disservice by not having anything for them to further the connection with me. And so during this COVID, I created some, um, some, some digital products, that type of stuff. And then right now I am doing, um, high ticket coaching where I have like a business, business accelerator where I do group coaching, but I also do one-on-one -on -one coaching for a higher ticket. And basically I'm helping coaches or experts scale their business online to six to seven figures because I don't want them to be like me and travel for three and a half years trading time for money. 
I want to get people to be able to make money from their laptop, be able to work from Tulum, Mexico. I don't care where you want. You can still jump on a call, serve your people and make a living out of it. Um, and so also going through the identity shift of, oh, he's the motivational speaker to, yeah, he was a motivational speaker, but that guy helped me make a lot of money. Um, yeah. And it helped me serve more people, right? So now Nick talks about business. He talks about sales. He talks about influence, um, things that people aren't used to me talking about, which is not only polarizing for some people, but it's great because let's say that all of our, for everyone listening, let's say our followers are like leaves on a tree branch, right? And we have products or services that we want to offer people. And now we're, we figure out who our ideal client is. When we have our messaging so dialed in that we're speaking to a specific person, not everyone's going to relate. And nope. so what that means is people are going to unfollow you. They're, there's going to be less engagement. And most people are like, oh, sh oh, shoot, this is a bad sign. But it's actually an amazing sign. Because what you're doing is you're shaking your tree branch. And those that fall off aren't your ideal client. And those nope. that stay... Are your ideal client, and so you tell me, would you rather have thirteen thousand likes on a photo and no one paying you, or would you rather have eight likes on a photo and six people paying you ten grand? Yeah, that's what it is, and and I know your content's been motivational, right, throughout throughout your touring, but down at the core, you've been a businessman, so it's it's not something that's just coming out of left field. It's something that's been part of your life. It's just something that you're. You, had, you hadn't shown it and, and COVID was a good opportunity for that. I know COVID was a good opportunity for me to transition to digital products because before COVID, I, I was touring too. I was doing speaking engagements around the world. I even had our, our own events planned with Hustle Inspires Hustle. We had an entire United States store we had to cancel, but then we concentrated on digital products. And, you know, the nature of my business is not podcasting. I'm, I'm, I'm a podcaster, um, but I'm a digital marketer. I've been a digital marketer my whole life. So my passion has always been to be able to work from my computer so I could explore different areas of the world, explore different cultures, get different values instilled, see other points of view and just just be a world class citizen. Right. So that's the purpose of this podcast. That's the purpose of everything we're doing with this movement on Hustle Inspires Hustle. Nick, I want to take thank you for taking the time to jump on here with us. I know you have a ton of things going on, but it was very important for me to get you on here. And I want to take a moment to thank you for opening my eyes at Social X. I want to thank you for all of the amazing content you put out and for always putting out positive energy because you could easily be putting out bad energy and seeing the world a certain way and you're choosing to change it for the better instead of for the worse. So guys, if you want to hear more about Nick and you want to find out more about what he has going on, go to hustleinspireshustle.com forward slash podcast and find the landing page. You're going to see a ton of material. You're going to see any resources that we mentioned linked so you could follow Nick and keep up with them. Nick, you want to leave us off with anything else? Yeah. One, Alex is grateful for the opportunity. Thanks for taking your time, having me on here. Um, I'm grateful to serve and I'll leave with one thing. And I think it's super power is, um, the quality of your life comes down to the quality of the questions you ask yourself on a day to day basis. And so what that means is our brains like a computer. You ask a shitty question. What kind of answer do you get? A shitty one. You ask a better question, you get a better answer. And so even if you just took one thing from this podcast is ask yourself better questions. And if you're getting negative thoughts and negative answers, then it means your your answer or your question is probably really shitty. And it needs to be a more empowering question. And so instead of asking why me um, in the midst of challenges or trials or failures, ask yourself, what can I learn from this? I'll, I'll leave with that. Guys, this is Alex Quinn, Nick Santanastaso, Hustle Inspires Hustle. See you next week. Thank you for joining me on this episode of the Hustle Inspires Hustle podcast. I'd appreciate it if you could share, leave a review, and subscribe to the show. Visit hustleinspireshustle.com forward slash app for more free resources, event invitations, and online courses to empower your personal and financial success. Learn about marketing, finances, business development, branding, strategic partnerships, and much more. If you're looking to further connect, check me out on Instagram or LinkedIn at Alex Quinn. That's A-L-E-X-Q-U-I-N. See you on the next episode.